We'll see now spanning tree protocol. Into our normal networks, if you see for the communication part, we use switches. We'll connect all your systems with the help of these switches. Now switches are being used to connect the network devices. Now here I'm using my switches, three switches, and PCs are being connected with the help of these switches now. There is a server over there and three systems connected to it. But it's a single point of failure. For suppose, if this system one is communicating, it will use this path, system two. Both will use this path to communicate. Similarly, system three will use that path to communicate. But if there is a link failure between the switch one, two, three, switch A and C are being disconnected, then no communication between switch three and the server. Now to avoid this single point of failures, we use redundant links. And to eliminate single point of failure, we are going to use a backup link. This is a redundant topology where I'm using another cable to connect A, B, and C. Three switches are being connected with the help of multiple links. If you connect this, we have a redundancy, but we have some problems. The problems like MAC address instability, broadcast stroom, multiple frame copies are being generated here. Let me show you an example. See this. I have a redundant link, but when the system is generating a frame with a broadcast MAC address, it will be sent to the switch, but switch initially broadcasts, which will be sent to all the other switches and to the device, which creates a broadcast again. Now it's a loop between the switches. This creates a MAC address table instability in every switch. A broadcast room we have and the same frame is rotating from one switch to another switch. Now, this makes your complete network down. To avoid this type of problems, we have a spanning tree protocol in the switches, which blocks the redundant path that is causing the loop. For suppose this, and it is an open standard introduced by IEEE. The code for this is 802.1D. Now I'm going to explain how this STP protocol makes use of this algorithm and blocks the redundant path that is causing the loop. I'm going to explain the analysis of spanning algorithm, how it works and how it's going to block the port on which switch, which port will be blocked now. First election between the switches will be for the root switch which acts as a master, every update into the network from the other switches will be sent to the root switch, which is a master. And root switch will update the remaining switches. Now, how this root switch will be elected? The root switch will be the focal point, which will be elected with the best switch ID. Best in the sense, lowest switch ID. How it will be seen, like switch ID, what it is actually, Switch ID is nothing but the priority of the switch plus the MAC address of the switch. And remaining will be the non-root switches. Now coming to this topology, if you see the priority 3 to 7, 6, 8 is same for all the switches. A, B, C. All the three switches have the same priority. Now if the priority is a tie between them. Next you will check for the MAC address. If you observe the MAC address of every switch, it is 001 for A, 002 for B, and 003 for the C. Among them, the least MAC address is for the switch A that will become as the root switch. And remaining left over will become as non-root. This will be the first selection in the switches, root switch and the non-root switches. How they know each other? How this switch C knows that A has the least? B knows that A has the least? They are going to exchange a hollow package, similar to hollows actually, here we call them as BPDUs, a bridge product called data units, which are being exchanged between the switches for every two seconds to identify each other. Now, after electing this root and non-root by exchanging the BPDUs, 
next election will be for the root ports root port is a port on the non root switch being used to send the update to the root switch and how it will be elected this is the election process every non root switch has a root port only one port will be a root port and that will be elected which is the least cost or which is having the lowest neighbor switch id if that is also a tie then it will go through the lowest physical port number the port which is closest to the root switch will become as the root port and that will be elected based on this least cost if that is a tie then it will go through neighbor switch id if that is also a tie then it will go through lowest physical port number we'll go through our example now now if you see switch b being connected to a with two links the 24th port being connected to a as well as 23rd port is also connected to a one is directly connected other one is indirectly connected among these two ports which will be the root port that we will see now we have some iterably cost values which are being given already and if you see it ethernet cost is 100 fast ethernet 19 gigabit ethernet 4 10 gigabit it will be 2 now into our example all these are fast ethernet ports now for the fast ethernet port for this link the cost is 19 for this 23rd port if you check this is how it can reach 19 plus 19 it's 38 now among these two this is having the least cost and that will become as the root port similarly for this non root switch also we have one port as root port and that will be the 23rd port because it has the cost 19 and this has the cost 38 fine we have done with the root ports next election will be for the designated ports for after electing this designated ports only you have the block port now designated port for every segment for every link we have one designated port the election will be the same as the root port the port which is having least cost if that is a tie then the port which is having lowest neighbor switch id if that is also a tie then least physical port number we'll go through the same example once again to check for this designated ports and if you see already we have root non root root ports elected now for every link i said we have a link from a to b a to c is a link b to c there is one more link for every link we have one designated port now first we'll check for this link which is a to b we have a link for this link 23rd port has the least cost because it is lying on root switch directly that will be the designated port similarly a to c we have a link for that also if you check as the cost of 24th port which is lying on root will be the zero that will be the designated port similarly b to c also we have a link for this link if you check the cost 23rd port cost is 19 24th port cost is 19 both have the same cost if there is a tie in the cost it will check for the least neighbor for this link the neighbor b and the other neighbor is c but the id of b is 002 it has the least and that will become as the designated now we have root ports designated ports the left or port which are neither designated nor root port will be blocked by the stp and if you see this after electing this designated root everything the left or port 24th port will be blocked and that is the non designated ports